Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at E-Trailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Ultimate Rear Helper Springs with Internal Jounce Bumper on a 2019 GMC Sierra 1500. Now, adding airbags to any truck is gonna be great, especially if you have a bunch of different loads uh, that you may tow that maybe vary because you get the adjustability of having different air pressures for different loads, and it's just gonna take a lot of the strain off your factory suspension. It's gonna keep the vehicle from squatting, and overall, you're just gonna have a level ride, which translates to better steering, better braking, and your headlights aren't gonna be shining up. There's a lot of different things, but overall, it's just gonna make it better for the driver. A lot of times, once you air those bags up with that heavy load, instead of the truck kind of sagging down and feeling like it's struggling, it's gonna give it that little extra supplemental help on that suspension to really feel like it's got a little bit more gusto to tow that trailer. Now, these replace your factory Jones pumpers, which from the factory, they're fairly small. They bolt up here, and ours actually has a lift plate that closes up the gap. But the problem is, is that suspension, it has to compress a decent amount before it bottoms out. And that means that truck is gonna sag all the way down until it bottoms. And then at this point, you're really not getting a whole lot of cushion. And that's where these come into play. You can adjust the pressure for uh, you know, the weight of the trailer, but also these have an internal jounce bumper. So it's gonna act as a bump stop as you're going down the road. So you still get that nice comfort of going down without a trailer loaded, but also it's heavy duty enough to really supplement. And that's kind of where these separate themselves from some other airbags out on the market is these have that internal jounce. So you're never really fully squishing that bag down. It's still gonna act as a, a bump stop, but you just can really add a little bit more as the weight gets heavier. So that's really cool. Uh, these also have a 5,000 pound weight capacity. It's not gonna bump up your capacity of what you can tow, but they can handle 5,000 pounds, which on a 1500 like this, I highly doubt you're ever really gonna max that out. Now keep in mind, even when you're going down the road with nothing on there, you wanna keep at least a minimum of five PSI in the bags. That's just gonna make sure that structurally it's gonna be able to hold itself up. It's not gonna be squishing around. Even though that jounce bumper's there, you wanna protect your bags long-term. If you plan on doing onboard air, this will play ball with any compressor that you pick up for this vehicle. Otherwise, you're gonna be running this in a dual path system, which means that you have individual control of each bag. So if you have an offset load, uh, you know, weight's a little bit heavier on one side of the trailer, you can adjust that accordingly. Now, if you want a single path, you can also pick up a T-Union that's all push connect and tie those into one. Uh, the bags are gonna stay exactly the same pressure on each side, so it's really up to you. This does allow for a little bit more adjustability from side to side, uh, but really it comes down to your pro personal preference. Overall, installation's actually not bad at all. Uh, minimal drilling required, and the drilling that's done is pretty simple. Uh, it uses a lot of the factory spots with brackets to bolt it up. It's really solid feeling, and overall, it's really not too hard to get this installed on your truck. So I'll walk you through all the steps to make sure you get it installed. So let's take a look at that. Now to begin our installation, I'm gonna go ahead and get our spare tire lowered down. It's gonna give us some room to work. Uh, it's just gonna make the installation a little bit easier. I also recommend having a floor jack if you're doing this on the ground. We're gonna be raising up the rear suspension of the truck to get it to be unsprung. That way we have a little bit more room to get those airbags in. So make sure you have all those tools ready. We'll go ahead and get our spare tire taken down. Now something else we're gonna do to just open this up, we're gonna get our heat shield taken down. It's just gonna be a series of uh, some 13 millimeter bolts that's right along this rear cross member. It looks like we have a total of six. So go ahead, take this down. We're gonna head to our driver's side where we're gonna find our brake line bracket bolted into the frame. And we're gonna be installing some spacers to bump that out to make clearance for our bags. So go ahead, we'll take these out. This should be a 13 millimeter socket. We're not gonna be reusing this factory hardware. Now grab your pipe spacer, our new bolt in, uh, included with our airbags and a flat washer. And we'll just put this in place. I'm just gonna hand thread this in place right now. We'll get these snug down. Now there's a torque setting and it's pretty low that's associated with this. It's found in the instruction manual, so you don't have to get crazy here. We're just gonna get this snug down. 
Now grab your torque wrench and get these torqued down to the torque settings. Now you're gonna be using a torque wrench for quite a few of the steps to get everything installed. Most of your hardware will have a torque setting associated with it. So you're gonna to wanna to pick one up or you can rent one from an auto parts store generally for free. Uh, but again, it's gonna be pretty crucial to make sure that everything's tight enough, but also not too tight. We're gonna to need to remove our factory jounce bumpers. And in order to do that, we're gonna be using a deep 10 uh, to get the bolt that's in there. Now the hard part is, is getting something else in there to loosen it up. So what I recommend doing is if you have that lifting device to get that suspension unsprung, let's go ahead and use that now. It's gonna open that up, make it a lot easier for us. So with this gap, it's gonna make it a lot easier. We can get our socket and extension. Uh, so with that 10 millimeter, we'll just kind of get this on the head of the bolt. And then loosen this up, and we should be able to get our jounce bumpers out. Now, depending on your trim level of your vehicle, you may have these spacers on the bottom, and we are going to remove those using an 8 millimeter socket. So there's just uh, four bolts that run through here. We'll go ahead and get these all removed and get our spacer block out of the way. Now, there are going to be these... Uh, uh, plates that these bolt into so if those drop down you can hold on to them uh, we're not going to be reusing them but uh, if you want to keep all your old suspension by all means so once we have this taken out we'll just go ahead and repeat the exact same steps on the other side of the truck now you're going to head uh, in front of the axle where we're going to get we have these guides that basically keep all of our wires attached and, and they'll protect them. We're going to be removing these bolts. There's one down here right by our U-bolts and then one that's tucked up further down on the axle. The other side is going to have the same thing. We're going to be re uh, removing them and we'll replace these later on. But this is just again going to give us some of that clearance we need. So you can hold on to this hardware. There's also gonna be a third one that's gonna be close to our brakes, kind of on the other side of our leaf springs. So we'll get that removed. Now we'll just pry our bracket away. Uh, we'll see that we do have some electrical connections that are attached to this. So with this loose, we're just gonna leave this like this and then we'll repeat on the other side as it's gonna be very similar. Now we're gonna to head to where our U-bolts are underneath our leaf springs, and we're gonna find that we have uh, a brake line bracket on both sides. We're gonna remove this bolt and hold tight to it. It's gonna be a 13. And we're gonna be putting a bracket in place that's gonna just drop this down to give us the clearance. So grab this out of your kit, and this is gonna just drop this down. Be careful with hard lines. You don't wanna kink them. You can move them. They are somewhat flexible, but just be uh, careful with them. You don't wanna damage anything. And we're just going to take our bracket, get this bolted back in. And that's just going to drop this down to give us that clearance. So we're going to get, uh, we have this bolt in our hardware. We'll put a flat washer and then we have nylon lock nuts. And we'll just clamp this down. So just move it. And we'll bolt this back up. So we'll get this kind of lined up and we're going to torque this down. Normally I like to torque on the nut side. It's not really possible here. So I just get my wrench in place. The 13 millimeter is going to accomplish that. And then we'll get our torque wrench and get this torqued down properly. Now we'll just go ahead and repeat on the other side. We're going to take our lower brackets and we're on the front side of the axle and we'll have two different sides. You can see there's a tab here that sticks out. The other side doesn't have that. And all we're going to do is just kind of rest this in here and we'll do the same on the other side. Now we're gonna to start to assemble our airbag assembly and you're gonna grab these plates and I'm gonna lay them out like this. Notice the notch here. This is gonna be my left side, this is gonna be my right, and this is gonna be important for when we start to install it. Sometimes it can get a little bit tricky, so laying it out early on to make sure we get all the proper hardware in the right locations is gonna be key. So we'll take two of the carriage bolts and we're gonna drop them in the inner holes here. And then we'll take our roll plate. We're going to be using these holes that are closer to the carriage bolt, so keep that in line. And this circle here, we're going to have that facing towards the opposite way of that carriage bolt. You'll then take your air bag, and one side will have a fitting for the air, uh, 90 degree fitting. The other side has the sticker. Take the sticker side, and this circle here, the cutout, should line up with the circle on your roll plate. And then what we'll do, we're going to flip this over. We'll get everything aligned. 
Now we're going to take our flathead socket cap screws and get these in place. I'm just going to hand thread them in first. Sometimes you'll have to move that roll plate around just to kind of get everything lined up. And we'll be using a 730 seconds hex bit on our torque wrench. Uh, the torque settings are going to be found in the instruction manual. So I'll just hand tighten these down first. And if you need to, you can place this down to get a little bit more leverage to get these torqued properly. Now take your top roll plate and we're just going to line this up. We're then going to take our 90 degree air fitting and first just take it and get it hand tight. And once you can't turn it with your hands, you're going to take a half inch wrench and pay attention to where you're at because we're going to want to do one and a half turns. So there's one. There's our half, and you want to be careful with brass fittings. Over tightening it can damage it, so sometimes uh, more is not better. So following that is going to give you a good reference. Now we can go ahead, we're going to start by getting this mounted up with our other bracket. Now grab your bracket, and these are side specific, so the main thing we're looking for, this slotted part's going to go on our air fitting. This radius edge should follow the bags. It should kind of sit right uh, to where it's nice and evened up. And now we'll just align this. And our hardware will take a split washer and a flat washer. And I'm just going to get this hand started right now. We'll get both of these in. I'll get these snug down using a 916 socket. And then we're going to torque these down to the manufacturer's recommendations. And at this point, we have one of our assemblies done. We'll just go ahead and repeat the same steps on our other bag. Now, with both of the bags assembled, this is the time that you're really going to need that lifting device to get as much lift as possible, obviously without raising up the rear tires. That way we can get our assembly put in place. Now, make sure you have the proper assembly. Your carriage bolt will be towards the rear of the truck, towards the inside, and your air fitting should be towards the wheel. So uh, this side's a little bit tighter here uh, because of the fuel tank. But we'll just kind of slide this up and it's going to slide around our factory jounce mounting spot and make sure that you got your carriage bolt in between uh, the original plate and the brake line here. And if you're at this point, you actually can squeeze the bag down a little bit and compress that. We'll get this in place. Now remember that plate that we put in place on the back side here, this is going to align. There's a slot in the lower bracket, so put that tab in there. And then take your carriage bolt, pass this down. And I'll just pinch these together, making sure that this sits in that slot. And take my serrated flange nut, and I'm just going to hand tighten this in place to hold that bracket. And then on the front side, we're going to grab the other bracket that's in our kit. And this will slide in just kind of like the other one. So we'll pick that carriage bolt that we initially put on our bottom plate. And then we'll drop in our other carriage bolt on the other side. And then this is a good chance to kind of just make sure it's centered up. You should be able to have both of these tabs in that lower bracket with your carriage bolts passed through. And then we'll just put our serrated flange nuts on here, just kind of hand tightening it. And we'll just tighten these down with a deep well 916 and just making sure that everything stays aligned and tight. Uh, now we are going to be coming back with our torque wrench, so just snug it down enough. And again, just making sure that those slots are in the bracket. Make sure everything's kind of aligned and sitting flat on this plate before torquing it down. Now with the bottom torqued down, we'll grab our U-bolts from our kit and slide these over the frame lining them up with our bracket. So this is a good chance to make sure that our bracket's nice and aligned. So we may have to squeeze this down to kind of move it as necessary until you can get the U-bolt pass through this as well as the forward side. Make sure that you're taking account for anything on the frame. Uh, this side not so much, but on your passenger side there's going to be some electrical connections. Just make sure that it's not going to bind up. And then we're just going to take our serrated flange nuts and just hand tighten, just get a few threads started on uh, each of our U-bolts on both sides. Make sure that your U-bolts are nice and parallel. Um, now, what we're going to do is, before tightening those down, we're going to lower down our vehicle 
So if you need to, you can go ahead and get your other assembly just in the exact same way up to this point. And then we'll just lower this down. That's gonna put the pressure on that top plate to where it's really gonna be where we want. So really adjust it, making sure that the bag is you know, sitting at a nice angle. Uh, and that's gonna really put the pressure on it to be able to tighten down our U-bolts. So before tightening this down again, check your U-bolts. Also make sure that the bag is sitting properly and that your brackets around that jounce cup. Um, so I'll, I'm gonna hand tighten these down first and then we'll snug them up with our 9 16 and then come back with our torque wrench. So again, make sure everything's squared up. Uh, we want this nice and even with the frame rail. Uh, you can use this center hole as a reference mark, but the uh, U-bolts again should be nice and vertical. And we're gonna make sure that this bag is as perpendicular as possible to the frame. Now, a deep well socket with a ratchet is gonna be really tough to get in here. So you may have to uh, opt for a ratcheting 9 16 to get these tightened down. And I would alternate from one side to the other to make sure that it's evenly tightened on your U-bolt. Now you probably noticed when tightening these down, it's already kind of tricky. So getting your torque wrench on there is also gonna be tricky. We used a crow's foot attachment and you just gotta be patient here and try to tighten it down as best as you can. Now we need to take a 5 16 drill bit and on our top brackets, these holes here, these are gonna become uh, spots where we put our self tapping screws in place, but we'll drill this out. Uh, it's also pretty tight here. I'm gonna swap over to my right angle drill to be able to get this accomplished. Um, and then we'll just be able to get that hardware in place. Now there's gonna be uh, two spots that you'll drill out on each side. So make sure you're getting all four of them drilled out total. Now take your shelf tapping screws and we'll get these in place and then torque down. Now we need to come back to these brackets that have these lines in place and make sure that everything lines back up. So I can get this one in place, this bottom one, not so much, and this top one, definitely not. And a lot of that is because it's making contact with this bracket. So we are gonna have to trim this out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of hold this up, line up the holes and make marks where we need to trim. We can then separate the connectors from our bracket and get this trimmed out. That way it's gonna slide up and we'll be able to bolt this back up. Now I ended up notching this out, uh, just use an angle grinder and just kind of uh, with those marks I made cut it. I also put some black spray paint on here just because it's raw metal. We wanna make sure that doesn't rust and everything was able to bolt up. To get these out, I did pry out the plastic clips using a trim panel tool to make it easier. But honestly, you could probably just have this here, pull those wires back, make sure you're not gonna cut them and you could notch this while it's still kind of attached. Um, I didn't have to do any adjustments as far as the mounting holes. They do say that in the instruction manual if yours is really far off, but that's not the case here. Um, something else to consider while we're under here, these hard lines for the brakes, make sure they're not making contact obviously with any part of the airbag. If you need to, you can lightly move them. Um, just obviously try not to kink them or put too much pressure, but just kind of uh, bend them out of the way, that way they're not gonna become damaged while operating our bags. Now our airline's gonna be in one loop. I suggest just pulling it out, finding the center point, and then making your cut. But when making your cut, we use a tubing cutter. It's basically just a razor blade on a hard surface. This is gonna make sure it's nice and square. If you use just a pair of uh, you know snips or something, a lot of times that's gonna create an almond-like shape, and that's not gonna go too well with those push connect fittings. So a nice clean cut with a tubing cutter is gonna be key here. Um, and as far as your push connects, when you push these in, you should kind of feel it lock into place. Give it a quick tug, it shouldn't come out, uh, but you want it properly seated. And then from here, we're gonna just route our lines back and determine exactly where we wanna mount them. It's kind of up to you, um, but I'll show you how to get those mounted up. Now, something I'll suggest is starting with your connections on the rear of the truck, and that way you can run your lines forward and determine if you have any extra slack, how much to cut off. Now, as far as getting this mounted up, there's a few different ways people do this. Sometimes you can use the bolts in the license plate and it gets a pretty clean install. You really can't tell that they're there, but it's super accessible. Other options include picking up a bracket. We have short brackets available. Uh, Airlift does actually offer a bracket that clamps around the hitch. This one, since it's a round hitch, it's not exactly the best fit for it. I just have an extra spare bracket that I have here that I'll be mounting up using a factory bolt that's right here. Now, to get this in place, you're gonna wanna put the hex nut on the threads. You then have a star washer. 
From here, you'll slide it into wherever you drill, uh, where you want to mount it up. You'll then put the rubber washer. Now, you don't have to get this all the way on because as you tighten, it's going to cinch down. And then we'll put a flat washer on. And then the other hex nut. Now, the hex nut on the back side, this is so you can adjust how far it sticks out. Um, so depending on your application, if you're going through stuff, you may not want it to have it stick out that far. For this, I'm just going to tighten this down and have all of it out. I'll then get this mounted up and then start routing these. I'll show you the path that I routed all my airlines once I have this done. So just coming off of our bracket here, I wrapped our driver side hose behind the hitch. And this is going to keep this out of the way of the exhaust as well as a spare tire. And make sure that the airlines aren't going to be rubbing on any hard surfaces, um, anything that could potentially chafe the lines. So from here I went over our cross member, through our body mount, and then as I made my way over, since the fittings on the outside, I used the U-bolt to zip tie uh, our airline. That way it's not going to make any contact with the tire or anything in the road surfaces. Uh, and then I got that one plugged in. The other side, I went kind of behind the plate. Using a lot of the factory wire loom is going to be a good way to run this, and you can zip tie that up as you go. So I just kind of went over, uh, over that cross member again, followed this large wire loom over the frame, zip tie that up to the U-bolt, and then made that connection. Now we need to put some air in the bags and test for leaks. Now, if you plan on putting a compressor in line later on, this definitely plays ball with it. Something that you might want to consider though is instead of going to a gas station or relying on the compressor at home, if you need to you know, air up the bags while you're out and about, Bayer has this small compressor which is really nice. You can set it to the PSI and you can keep this in your truck somewhere and it's going to be able to fill those bags up. So we'll turn this on and 30 PSI, so we'll start filling this up. Now I'm just going to take a, a soapy water solution and just spray down our connections. And this is going to make sure that if there is a leak that we can't hear, we're going to start to see large bubbles forming up. And that's going to be the sign of an air leak. And the best way to fix that is get that air out of the bags first. So drain them and then recut and maybe take some of this uh, tension out that you may have. But with a fresh cut, putting that back in your connector should be a great way to fix that. Now that we know for sure we don't have any leaks, we can go ahead, we'll get our heat shield put back up as well as our spare tire. And then all you need to do, hook up to your trailer, air the bags up to however you want and hit the road. And that was a look at installation of the Airlift Load Lifter 5000 Ultimate Rear Helper Airbags with internal Jounce bumpers on a 2019 GMC Sierra 1500.